What's going on, traders? Welcome back to Start Swing Trade, where we take a look at my swing trade action on the day. And of course, take a look into the market. Look for rotation. See what we're seeing underneath the hood. Is the rally coming to an end? Of course, you guys see the title right above. Smash a like. Let's get to the action. Let's take a look at the SPY here as we are getting a little bit of a red day here. We'll see what happens. How do we close, right? We did get up there back through the opening price, but now starting to leak out here. Will we get a downturn here <clears throat> towards the close? Another thing to keep an eye out, right? The Qs. The Qs have been leading the way up. I think the Qs lead the way down, right? And so I think this is one thing that we need to kind of keep an eye out for. Of course, today, the only sector in the green from the open is healthcare. So if you're looking for something that was a little bit stronger today than others, it is healthcare. We got communication services in the red. Deep into the red, we have energy. So let's get into our swing trade action and take a look underneath the hood. All right, you guys in the chat, what's going on out there? It's good to see you guys. Easy. Crow, what's going on out there? Team Raz, say hello if you're new to this show and let's get to the action. All right, let's go to first the day trades today and the swings that were working well. All right, so the first thing we're going to do at is just take a look at, you know, what did we take profits in? What did we get hit in? Well, this morning I did wake up deep into the green on Tesla, but got wrecked here towards the open as definitely we caught some news in the morning and should have just covered here in the morning and, and just taken what I could. But as you can see in the morning, it climbed back up there, squeezed at the open, stopped me out through uh, 264s up towards 265s. So I took a major hit there on Tesla after taking a major reward last week, right? Well, giving up some of those gains and definitely was a little bit of a frustrating one, but was able to bounce back. I'll talk about those bounce back trades right now. And then another trade that went against me today, which was AU, was going to hold off this 23, but really didn't want to get this back that, that down through the support. So I just got out of this trade, cut it, uh, definitely took another hit there. So those are the two losers on the day. Let's get to the green, baby, what everybody wants to hear from. All right, so the green, let's talk a little bit about these trades. Chevron was a big trade that we took on Friday. I added to this position, looking to take a bigger shot down into this gap. And why? Because I was looking to see if WTI would crack down right back below, of course, the 70 mark. And today we did crack right below the 70 mark for just a second, around 11. We're right back up there towards close to 71, but just going to keep an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't go back through kind of 72, 73. And below into the 60s, I think we could get this move to keep going lower. So today, taking some profits into the 155.41s, not looking too bad as this is down to 153.30s, up about 3.29% on this position. A really nice gain so far and just going to continue riding it further. All right, XOM is another one that we've been short, and this is one that I've been short from 108.42. So if you guys think about that, that's all the way up here. We're looking good right now. Just really looking to see if this could really start breaking down here and just keep going lower. Now we're getting towards these lower lows where I could get some out at 102s or I could look for the 100 break. I'm going to be looking to see if we eventually break 100 on ExxonMobil and keep going lower. That'd be eight points on this trade. Let's see what we can do. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other action, but definitely oil going lower is definitely a trade that I could see continuing to work. We'll see what happens in Oxy. Is that able to hang on? I've talked about how this one looked like it wanted to go lower. Now we're cracking the 58s back to the 57. Will Warren save it again? Or will he just step to the side this time and let the stock retrace a little bit further before he goes buying up a little bit more of Oxy? That's one thing that I'd be looking at. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other action. Uh, my Tesla calls and XOM puts were printing. Man, that Tesla call wasn't looking that great in the morning, but it's going to get good news, right? I mean, the puts on the XOM, can't blame you for it. Tesla calls are probably looking really good right now, especially as it rides higher, even though the market's riding lower. Big push up there on Tesla, up there to 271. Definitely overbought by all means, but that doesn't mean that it needs to turn around today, right? We'll see what happens there. 
Let's keep going. Let's talk about another trade that I took. Of course, uh, I took the SQQQs and just continuing the battle with this one. I actually added on the recent pullback, was able to take some profits today into the 20s. I got some out there at specifically, I give you guys 2004 at 1029. Not looking too bad on this one from 1907. So going to continue to ride this higher. Don't want to see a break 1950. Would like to see a little bit of a run here towards the close to keep it over the night. If not, going to go ahead and just take the profits that I have. I did add back to this position here on the bottom action. So uh, we I added back to this position just recently towards at like 126 at 1951. Don't want it going through the 1950s here. I'm going to keep an eye on it. If not, just take the money and run in the SQQs. All right, there's another trade that I took on towards the close on Friday, which was Zscaler towards the close. And we got short on this one based on the daily outlook really is what I looked at. I can see these rejections off 160. And I said, you know what? I will take here 154 off kind of 158 level. Look to see if this goes lower towards the 150 level and can keep coming down here towards this gap. Not a bad one. Taking first profits today into 149.11. We're at 148.50s. And this looks like it could continue going lower. So I'm not going to cover right now. I'm going to look to see if I can get another leg lower in Zscaler and continue riding this one down. We'll see what happens here as this starts to pull back and keeps going lower. Uh, one that I opened up today, just today, I said, you know what? I'm going to step up to the plate in Adobe. So I have not taken profits on this one, keeping a close eye on it. I'm deep into the green right now, but I wouldn't say deep into the green, at least just on the intraday action. I was having an order out there to take some profits at the 480 mark. And you can see we got really close to it earlier in the day. We went to 480 40s. So might have missed a little bit of a profit take there. Could have just taken it off there at 148 uh, 50s. That could have been the profit. I wasn't at the computer at that time, so there you guys see it. Uh, we'll see what happens in Adobe. Right now, I'm just hanging on kind of break even to see what happens if this one can really break down. I got 489.34s. We're at 485. This one could keep coming right back towards the 90 in May 1st. 470 would be the stop for that. So I'm going to see what happens here towards the close if we can see any type of downside action. Of course, keeping an eye on the SQQs and the Qs, will we just come right back down and crack here towards the close? That's what I'm looking for from 3 p.m. on, but we'll find out. 3 p.m. right being right here. Let's see if we get above or below this, drawing a little box so we can see what happens in the next hour. All right, uh, profit taking in Intel and Oracle. Hmm. Well, I'm glad I took all my money out of Intel as I see that turning around strong today from the 37 area. And I took my profits up there towards the 36, 37 area. Can't be mad about this, right? 36, 60s, 36, 50s. That was kind of the top gain there on Intel and now pulling back significantly. So happy I took that money and ran with Intel. Let's keep taking a look. We'll see what else is going on. Michael bringing an interesting question here. What do you think about LNG? Hot summer, more uh, consumers. Well, the truth is with LNG, I'd be careful because I think you could see continued uh, hit to that action. I did see that there was some supply news today. Another deal going by. I think it was with India and China. But to tell you the truth, I've gotten to the point where I almost don't even pay attention to the natural gas news. I think this is a lost cause in looking into this trade because the truth is, even when we're getting pops, what are we getting? We're getting pops about like, let's say 30, 40 cents, maybe a dollar on the upside. Is this really something that I want to be looking at? Personally, for me, not enough risk to return on this. And yeah, you can maybe risk like, you know, 50 cents, 30 cents. Look to see if you get a $5 move, but we haven't seen that reverse. And if anything, what do we see? Continued declines in Boyle and UNG. There's a reason why it's on my band list to the upside. I'll tell you one thing. The one that's been making more sense this whole time has been coal, and that's the ultra short version of this. But I'll tell you what, even that's not going anywhere. So to me, this trade is a nothing trade for me right now. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other action. 
Bit, Bitto, Bitto getting a little bit of a lift. I think you got to continue to watch what happens with uh, kind of cryptocurrency to see if it comes back into play with the way that uh, the NASDAQ was. MSTR showing you that strength that it does looks like it wants to come back up. Bitcoin stocks. I'd keep an eye out on like Mara. You can see today, what do you get? You finally get that lift above the 10 a nice little lift off towards 11. You can see I created the box here on June 2nd, looking to see if we were ever going to fill that. And there you have it. Now we're finally filling up there and closing. So keep your eyes on these Bitcoin plays. They could have just gotten hot. You can see Hut starting to make a move. You can keep an eye out on a bunch of these. It's not just one, right? Riot had a big move last time. And if you can see, what is this doing? This is doing what's called the leader laggard trade, right? Well, Mara is taking lead. Riot is lagging a little bit. Hut already went through that trend line. Will Riot play lag and start making its way to 12 tomorrow? This is one that I'll definitely keep on my radar. We'll see what happens here on Riot if it can keep climbing and going higher. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at the sectors and the industries out there. And of course, if you guys got a stock, Please let me know what else is making moves. Now, there is one play that I'm just slightly in the red that I'm battling myself to figure out if I'm going to take it off or not. I did get short some Carnival today, and I got short at 1584s. Why am I short Carnival? Because I just feel like it's gone way too far, way too fast. And you can see it's up there to 16. I think this one could come right back down to 15, 14s. So I'm looking to risk about 30 cents to see if I can make a little bit over a dollar on the name. Let's see what happens here on CCL. I have an average at 1584, and it's not the biggest position because I'm trying to keep it nice and short risk up to 1610s. So we're talking about what? You know, less than 30 cents there on the risk. We'll look to see if this comes crashing down here towards the end. Of course, I've been recently gone long on Norwegian and Carnival Cruise Lines. I took the profits on Norwegian, and we'll see if Norwegian can come right back down. I will also be looking for pullbacks on Norwegian. If it could come right back down towards like 15, 16s, I'd be looking for some pullback buy opportunities. But for right now, we'll see what happens. This one was uh, down earlier on the day, now starting to climb back. We'll see if CCL finally lets go here. All right, let's keep taking a look at some other stocks to take a look at the healthcare today. Healthcare plans, not doing bad there. UNH bouncing back after really getting hit. CVS having a decent day there, bouncing back. Um, we could take a look at ELV, Alviance Health, bouncing a little bit. Yeah, these healthcare plans are coming back, but are, do I trust these moves? I think they're just kind of more just bounce backs after really getting hit hard off of the news on UNH and Humana down big. We'll see what happens to these names if they're able to catch a bounce. THC is the one that I'm looking at to see if this could ever get the move. Off of that news, we were thinking that maybe the hospitals would be the stocks that would profit from the recent action. I'll look to see if I make a move above 80s. I wouldn't mind taking a swing on THC if it can make a move back above 80s. And we're not talking about that THC team. I know what you're thinking out there. Let's keep it going. All right, let's go to another area. Medical device stocks doing pretty decent there. Abbott Labs bouncing back now towards 107. We'll look to see if this can actually get a move on. Uh, I don't I don't see this moving much right now. It's just starting to get ready. Medtronics is maybe one that I would say is moving a little bit faster towards the upside, but really needs to get through 90s to keep going. We'll find out what happens there on MDT. I was looking at the major drug manufacturers. Today, Lily coming in with news about a purchase for DICE. DICE, D-I-C-E. That got it up there to 46, 48. Well, you can see Lilly actually didn't take much of a hit off of that. Normally, the acquirer takes a hit and the acquiree takes the lift, right? Well, we'll see what happens here. Johnson & Johnson now pulling back. Merck is one that I'd keep on my radar. I've been looking at this daily chart to see if it can make a move back towards 115s. Uh, it's starting to get the move. We'll see if it really can get strong. Avi getting some volume as of late. This one looks interesting. Why? Because I can see kind of the monthly bottoms coming into play. Will it be able to hold here and make a run back towards the upside? I'd keep an eye on it. At least you know your bottoming levels around 134s. A lot of volume coming in in the last couple of days. Will this start to make a move back above 140s? Is something I'd keep an eye out for. That's AVV 
of course, ABBV. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other action. You guys smashed the like out there, guys. Over 76 of you guys. Let's see if we can get some more people in here. Communication services also taking a pullback as of late. T-Mobile even taking a pullback. This has gone down towards 130s. Long-term support line here. We'll see if it's able to bounce off of that. Verizon and T-Mobile, same kind of uh, Verizon and AT&T, same kind of chart. We'll see if these are able to get a bounce back. Industrials pulling back after these have been really, really strong. Honeywell giving me an opportunity if I want to go after the 200 spot to get it again. That's where I'm fighting myself. I don't know if industrials are going to continue lifting off like they have been. They have been a really strong area. We'll look to see if we catch some buy the dippers and then start to see this go higher. Caterpillar pulling back today. Deer staying strong, though. A little bit of recovery here towards the end. I don't know which way to go on this one, so I'm not taking too many bets here. But I'm keeping an eye on it, of course. GE pulling back. Will it ever break the trend here? I'll keep an eye on it. That'd be a move towards like 100 tomorrow. If we could get a move to 100 tomorrow, that's something definitely to look after here in General Electric. All right, let's keep going, team. Let's see what else are being moved around out there in the industrials. Uh, you are still seeing some kind of catch a little bit of a lift. I saw SPCE get a nice lift today. Virgin Galactic having a decent day in the aerospace and defense. Trying to make a move to six. Is this a stock that I'd be looking at? No, by any means necessary. Nothing that I want. But hey, you know how it is. I know you traders out there looking at a stock like this. Can it keep moving? We'll find out. Lockheed Martin, 460s, pulled back multiple times here. Now catching the bounce here around the 450 areas. Will we make the move right back? It seems like Lockheed Martin has been stuck in between a range here between the 450s and the 490s. Last time we came up here, we came up pretty fast up to the 490s. Let's see if we can make a move back towards that 490. All right, going to keep going here. TMO doesn't stop. Let's take a look there. TMO is Thermo Fisher, of course, diagnostics and research stock. This is starting to pull back after having a pretty strong day. Is actually a nice, nice little pullback here. We'll look to see if it can make a move to 550. Uh, another area that I like in here, I like Dexcom. Uh, diagnostics and research. This looks pretty strong here. Nice pullback to the 9 EMA and holding well. Um, this is actually one that I'd keep an eye out for a monthly move. This looks great here for maybe a run towards uh, 150. Don't like this. Uh, don't mind this one. Also kind of more in the investment mindset, but I feel like I got this way too late now. Would want it closer towards 100. It's at 130. All right, let's keep going. SPAC is switch swing is a trade for me. We'll see what happens out there. The SPACs attack, baby. Are they coming back? Who knows, right? Who knows? All right, let's keep going. What got hit the most? Energy, of course. We've talked about how those oil stocks continue to take a beating. And there's some taking more of a beating. Phillips 66 today, really falling off the table, down about 3%. We'll see if it gets through 90 and really starts cutting lower. Defensive names even taking a hit today. I thought that maybe, you know, you'd get a little bit of a lift here. Even like kind of Philip Morris got an upgrade today and even that couldn't hold the lift today. So it just goes to show you that it's not even defensives that are lifting us higher on a day like today where we got a little bit of a pullback. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Which sector is really going to take that next step higher, right? Is it going to be technology? Is it going to be industrials? Is it going to be healthcare? I'm keeping an eye on it. Right now, healthcare seems to be the one with the stronger move. But of course, we all know that can change on a dime. KRE coming down there to the 4211s today. Bank of America coming down to 2890. Take a look at JPM. Not looking as strong as it was looking just a little while ago. We'll look to see if the banks can get another lift and start pushing faster. All right, of course, you guys can take a look at that also on XLF. You can see how that's been pulling back. Just no one really wants to take a bet there. All right, we'll see what else is going on in the chat there. What are you guys taking a look at? What stocks are you on your mind today? Smash the like button out there, team. All right, let me get a little sip of water here. Let's keep it going, team. What are you guys taking a look at today? All right, let's see what else we can find here. And basic materials also taking a beating. I've been looking to see if this is really going to start getting strong. 
And of course, I did a little bit of some barbecuing this weekend. So Cole has to get a lift now, right? We'll see what happens there. We are getting a little bit of a lift here in Cole. Can we finally get another run there? That's one thing that I'll keep an eye on it. And if Cole does run, that's where I got to be careful that we start seeing another energy run in oil. But I am starting to see BTU with a nice little day higher. AMR is really my best of breed here for Cole if you're looking for a play. Look how this is setting up here for a nice move higher towards 171. Will this take a run there towards 200 and really start lifting? Um, monthlies look really good off of 150 pullbacks. We'll look to see if we can get back above 171, but this is looking good here in AMR. What do you guys think about Cole? You think this can get a lift? Let me know in the chat. What are you guys thinking? All right, let's keep going. I see some other names out there. I see Docu throwing up in the chat. We'll get to some action. CEIX is another Cole player that I keep on my radar, really showing some strength as of late. This one could keep going through 70. I will keep an alert there, and I'll watch to see if some of these coal plays start making a move. Lumber and wood production starting to get another lift. Hmm, how can I play this? Well, WFG, West Fraser Timber, looks like the play for me. I'm looking at pullbacks here. I'm starting to show on the monthlies some strength, so definitely seeing continued pullback in this action, but now starting to see some strength coming in here. This is pulled back multiple times through the 70s. Can this get back to 100 is what I'm asking now. So I'm going to keep an eye on it, but definitely a big move there for WFG. And if that starts making a liftoff, will Home Depot make a liftoff? Another stock that I'm keeping close on my radar for some upside action. And of course, this isn't in the cyclicals, so that's where we got to keep it in mind. Same thing for Lowell's pulling back here. We'll look to see if we get another up move in this action. All right, let's keep going. SPCE finally making that above six move. There it goes. Above six it goes. We'll see if the Qs can keep going here. Qs came back to the upside action, but really haven't just determined the direction, right? So I'm going to look to see what happens here towards the end. Do we get a move back above 367? Or do we get a takedown right back through 366? That's what I'm kind of keeping an eye on. Right now, we're closer towards that 367 move than the 366 takedown. We'll find out what happens in the next couple of minutes. All right, keeping an eye on Adobe. Adobe is working its way back. I might just have to take the profits and run, but I'm still giving it a chance here for a Q little takedown here towards the close. We'll find out. I think keep your eyes on a stock like Apple, now back at VWAP. Will it start to crack here? Microsoft, now starting to crack below VWAP. Google, now starting to hold on. Will this crack here? right back towards 123 is something I'm watching on. Oracle was strong earlier, now really taking a hit and continuing right back down. CRM was a really strong one, now starting to get towards 217. Can this continue going? Maybe you're seeing some rotation coming into CRM and getting out of Oracle. We'll find out what happens. Definitely a quick pullback there on that one. All right, Molin, not going to touch that stock. I don't think that stock is anything that we even need to cover. We'll keep it going here, team. All right, what are the ones that are being covered in the chat here? I see Starbucks mentioned here. It's trying to get back below the 101 uh, mentioned. We'll see if this can get back up there. Starbucks, to me, has already made a huge run and could just keep coming sideways for the rest of the year even. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily just going to get completely hit hard. But I also don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Just like bros, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at what other stocks are making moves in the S&P 500. What's your top gainer on the day and what's your top loser? Let's take a look there. So top gainer from the open because you guys know how I am. I have to trade from the open. I think it's very important to catch moves like this. Generac today. Hmm. Wasn't looking at Generac to make a move. But take a look at that hourly. Big push up there towards the 130. Can this start reversing from the bottom? We'll find out. This stock loves to squeeze a little bit. I'll be looking to see if we hold on pullbacks towards around 124 and continue going through that 129. We're at 129 right now. Can you get to 130? The resistance at around 129. Next spot from there, 132. We'll look to see if that keeps climbing. 
Tesla, one of the strongest stocks, of course, up about 4.27% from the open. Thermo Fisher, we've talked about that. DHR starting to come back. Diagnostics and research, not looking too bad. Dish Network getting a little bit of a pump on volume on Friday, now starting to go a little bit higher. Not something that I'm looking at, but hey, it is in the green. PayPal continuing in the green. This is one that I missed, team. I actually had it on Friday, sold it early just because I thought we'd get a turnaround. And look at that. It's continuing higher. So just wanted you to know it. When PayPal goes higher, what do I think? Square could go higher. Of course, I sold this one, was looking for a move to 70. Sold it last week a little bit early. Who knows? We'll see what happens there in Square. Can it make it up all the way to 70? Find out, of course. All right, let's keep going, team. It's about 3.34. I'm going to play a quick trailer, and we'll be right back, team. You guys smash the like. Let's see what's going on in the market. And, of course, throw up your top winner today. We'll make sure that we cover it right here on Start Swing Trade. Smash it up, guys. Let's keep it going here. Check out, of course, Trade the Pool if you haven't done so already, team. Introducing Portfolio Synchronization with your brokerage. Now you can securely connect your brokerage account to Benzinga Pro, opening a world of personalization. Screen lightning fast news just for the stocks you own. Set alerts for news catalysts that affect only the companies you care about. It's all possible with a simple click and a secure protective connection. Overcome uncertainty and connect your portfolio to Benzinga Pro today. All right, team, let's keep it going, team. We'll see what happens. And uh, a little bit later today, I want to let you guys know about a release that we're doing. Of course, we're going to be releasing some VCon content, so don't miss that. That should be really exciting moment uh, coming to you guys a little bit later today. Should be really fun. You guys will get insights from, of course, Avery Akinali, uh, president of Vayner3. Chris Ketchy should be joining me in a little bit to talk a little bit more about this release. So stay tuned, team. Let's get to the action. Let's take a look at the SPY. How are we looking now? Are we going to leak? Are we going to climb? Let's find out, team. You can see the SPY. Very similar pattern that I drew on the queues, right? That downtrend that we've been on. Will we get the spike or will we get a little bit of a leak here? You can see we're starting to come back here closer towards the support. 437s is kind of the level that I'd be looking for. If we crack that to the downside, we could see a little bit of a leak here towards the close. Q's now kind of just sticking up here. Will we see that downside action? 367 on upside. You guys let me know if you see it go through that 367 or 366 on the downside action. All right, let's keep going. I'll take a look at some other action. Uh, I'm not ready for hurricanes. Yeah, I'm not ready for hurricanes either, but I do see that action in. Uh, it looks like we were having a tropical depression uh, starting to form there. So be careful out there, team. I know I'm going to be watching hurricanes this season. Got to stay safe always. Stay ahead of the game. We'll see what happens. Maybe especially on a year where inflation's really high, Maybe we look at those hurricane preparations a little bit earlier before you get a whole bunch of people showing up at Home Depot and Lowe's and taking all the supply that's out there. All right, let's go to some other stocks here. I did see one mentioned in the chat that's interesting. What about gold? I love gold, right? Well, I don't love gold today. It definitely stopped me out. Uh, I took a shot in AU. Uh, but we are seeing NEM pull back here. It was starting to prop up here. So maybe it was just a little bit of a pullback that I got caught in. AU was a definitely disaster today. So glad that I got out of it before I got continued uh, pullback. But NEM looks a little bit better. Looks like it's holding in here toward kind of this uh, high 4270. Today we went to 4258. Wouldn't want to see 4270s break again. I'd want to see that hold start climbing back here towards 4350. We'll see what happens there in Newmont Corporation. Of course, a gold play. A AU, more like, hey, you. Yeah, no, more like, hey, no. Hey, no, get out of here. More like it. But yeah, AU was a good one. I've played it before, but hey, it, it was into the green there for a little bit. I was looking for a close above 25. Just never got it. You can see it here. Nice little bunch up. Just couldn't get moving. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other action in the market. 
Um, let's go to technology. Let's see what got hit actually the most here in the queues today. I want to start seeing if some of these stocks are showing us something that we need to look out for. So ENPH shows up here. And what does this tell me? Well, I already called it in the intraday, but I could see that there's weakness coming into solar names. Solar names really starting to take a beating. And I think this all first starts with what the leader, right? That's how I always look at it. First solar, it looks like it wants to drop through this supporting trend line. And if it goes through there, it could easily start letting go. You can take a look at some other action, right? You could take a look at SEDG. This is the kind of Canadian play. Talked about how on Friday, this didn't look good as it rejected the 300 recently and now looks to start coming down. Looks like it's starting to crumble. Max N was one I was even thinking about shorting today. The big thing for me on Max N was I just had to kind of get some borrows. So I was kind of fighting myself if I short this name. But there you guys see it down there towards 2667. So it doesn't look too bad there. And it looks like this could really start letting go after this was really hot for like kind of two weeks. Well, there you guys see it, even Max N coming down. So I'd be careful with any solar play right now. I feel like a lot of those could come crashing back down. And you got to be careful on names like that. Um, let's see what other stocks in there have kind of looked good there. SPWR, that doesn't look good by any means. Run, Nova, even like let's say an ETF like TAN. I'd start being careful because look how quickly you came right back down. We'll see what happens there. All right. That's, of course, solar stocks. Let's go back to the queues. Let's see what else got hit the hardest on the downside. You see Intel. We've talked about that. That looks like profit turnarounds there. WBD, Warner Brothers Discovery. What happened there? Everybody thought The Flash was going to be a really good movie and looks like Warner Brothers getting wrecked today. Also, Disney getting hit hard off of their premiere. Their movie didn't do good either. And I did go to the movies this weekend. I saw a comedy, um, but definitely I did not see uh, a Disney movie. I did not see Flash, e even though Flash interests me a little bit. I'm not going to lie, but you guys can see Disney coming right back down. Will Netflix come down here? So Netflix has been hanging on here, has made a huge run as of late. Pulled back to the nine, started coming back to the 440s. Will we climb back to the 450 or will we start to give up these massive runs in Netflix? We'll find out, of course. I think a lot of this has to do with kind of the cues. If the cues let go eventually, I feel like Netflix lets go. You can see right now we're trying to battle back here through 367. Look how there's three topping actions here on the five minute. We'll see if we get a close above that 30704, seems like right now. We'll see if we get that close on a five-minute basis. All right, we'll take a look at some other action in the market. AVGO still staying strong there. That doesn't look too bad there on Broadcom. We'll look to see if that can continue higher. Apple looked interesting earlier. That did stay strong on the day. It's just hanging out here on the VWAP. We'll look to see if we get another move up. All right, continuing the battle here. Let's go to AMC in the chat there. Cinemark, mm, doesn't look too bad overall. I think you are going to be seeing people going back to the movies. But these stocks aren't sexy. Let's just be honest. Cinemark even starting to pull back here. Um, and I think that this one was holding on pretty well, but now starting to let go. Um, so I could see Cinemark coming right back down through that 15. AMC. I think it just stays over here. Eventually, maybe even gets to $3. This just doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. All right, we'll see what else is going on out there. The pumpers, the pumpers on AMC, well, they ain't going to be able to pump much because they ain't much there to pump. GME hanging on to 2465. Will that one come right back down to 20 as it just kind of hangs on? Sometimes I get surprised that GME can hang on for so long. Avis budget was one that I wanted to watch today car to see if it could get the rip and look at this guys continuing to push higher here towards the close. We were talking about this one right here on start swing trade. We talked about this one just on Friday. We we're taking a look at it to see if it could start really getting going here. Now up there to the two twenty fours. Will this one make a huge squeeze? I definitely think it could be one that's on the radar for that type of action. Now really starting to get going here above the 220s. How do I come after this stock? 
I have no idea because it's pretty expensive. It moves pretty fast. So I got to be careful on a name like this, even in an hour, moving about almost four points for a day, almost nine points. So we got to be careful with a stock like this. But can I see this really start going? Yeah. And if I see cars starting to squeeze, will a squeeze maybe come to Hertz? Something that I'm keeping an eye out for. Above 18, I want to watch this, especially if Avis is going to get that big leap forward. We'll keep an eye on it. All right, let's keep pushing. We'll see what else is being mentioned in the chat. Uh, I see snow being mentioned out there. Give me snow. Don't flake on me. All right, we'll see what happens there. Snowflake, will this come right back down? I'm thinking this this has gone a little bit of ways. It doesn't look too bad. But also, I mean, this is pretty much kind of building up sideways. you got to be careful with a little bit of a chart like this. It could pull back still towards 160. We'll look to see if it holds. All right, CCL not going anywhere here. It's just kind of hanging in here. So not feeling too confident about this one. So instead of just hanging in here and just staying slightly in the red, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and just cover here on CCL. If anything, just set the stop right above it here, like two or three cents. Um, so I'll do it. I'll do 1595 here. Um, it does make a little bit of a move here. I'll just get out of the name. Don't want to be hanging on too much because CCL has been doing well here. But like always, you just got to always keep the risk in mind, right? So I'm moving my risk down here from instead of 1611s down to 1595. We'll see what happens there in CCL. All right, let's keep going. Adobe, just keeping an eye on it to see what happens here in the queues. The queues back above the 367. So that's very important. The queues. Uh, the SQQQs testing down here towards 1950s. Going to give it the chest, the uh, test to go down below that. But at 48, I'll take the profits and run there on SQQQ. All right, let's go ahead and make make sure I have that set up here. All right, setting that stop there towards 1946. Um, gave it a little bit of a scent just in case we get a little bit of a wick down here. Just got to keep up with uh, also Zscaler starting to make its way back here. Not going to let it get through 150 on this one. Got to go ahead up and just set stops for, for things to come back and make sure that I take profits. On Zscaler, even if I got out there on a 150 pop, this is still a nice gain for me. So I just want to make sure that I'm just preparing myself if I do get a little bit of ride higher here in the queues. All right, let's take a look at what else is being called up in the chat. I like PDD long, says Sam. I don't mind taking a look at PDD. Of course, China stocks taking a big pullback today based on pretty much the news that uh, was given by the secretary. Of course, uh, this morning that we got news that the U.S. Uh, was stating here, at least Secretary of State Anthony Blinken stated that we do not support Taiwan independence that was a crazy comment. It definitely affected China stocks. Now you're seeing them pull back. Will these start to get a lift? That's something to keep an eye out for on PDD, Baba, JD. I just feel like too many are going down right now for me to take a shot to the upside. But I can't blame you, Sam, for taking a shot. At least you have some pullback to go off of. You're definitely getting it at a discount. Let's just see if we can get some positive catalysts to show up on the tape. All right, CCL earnings Monday. You're holding. You're holding long. I'm guessing real estate, lifestyle, CT. I, believe it or not, I, I'm not against the cruise lines. I rode NCLH for a long time on the upside. I'm just calling a little slight pullback, even before the earnings. I wouldn't be holding it towards the earnings unless it just completely just got slammed down. But even then, I'd probably just take my gain, right? I'm looking for pullbacks. I want to find these on pullbacks. But the truth is, I just feel like they've gone too far too fast. All right, we'll see what other ones are mentioned in the chat. Michael wants to take a look at Docu. Docu is just one that I feel like, I, I think Dennis talked about it. Everybody uses it, yet it doesn't want to go up. And when a stock does that, we got to be careful. Could it be that the valuations of this stock are just completely off, Right. That's what I think it could be. I think this stock could maybe just, it's just not a $50 stock. Maybe it's not even a $40 stock. Maybe it's not even a $25 stock. Do the research on DocuSign. Really look into the fundamentals. 
What is going to drive it back through that 70? What kind of catalyst does it have? What kind of fundamentals do you see going in the future? How's the growth? Where's the growth going to come from? Give me the upside outlook. I don't see it right now in DocuSign. I see continued leak on this stock. We'll see what happens. All right, let's keep going. CXAI, let's go to the, the AI names. This is one of my top ones that I've been watching for. I've been drawing this line and looking for a breakout above 11. Talked about this multiple times here with a friend of mine. I'm really hoping he grabbed it there towards 11. Uh, I got to talk to him after the bell, but we've been drawing this line for a while. We created this line on June 6th, looking for this move above CXAI. Now you're getting it. Now you're up there towards 1339. And this is the one I think could really squeeze higher with the AI names. AI kind of holding in here at 4320s. We'll look to see if CXAI really gets off the ground. This is one that I really like because it built up on the daily chart versus just the intraday chart. There you guys are seeing it. A nice daily move there to 1337. This one could get at six. This could be at this high, 1560s by tomorrow. Did I miss this one today? Yes, I did miss this one. But hey, nice pop here towards the close. 1332s could keep driving higher. Big move up there. Sound. What's up with the sound hound up there to four? Also, what do you see here? Daily move continuing higher. So these that have nice daily moves are looking good for that nice little uplift. Crow's been crushing the CXAI and kill it again, my friend. That looks really good there on CXAI. I love daily charts for stocks to do this. Pop, give me sideways action, drop recovery, sideways action, drop recovery. Doesn't look too bad. Nice levels to go off of. We'll see if this can take off. All right, uh, let's keep it going. CMG mentioned in the chat, Chipotle, Chipotle, hanging on. Did Kava came back? I think this is more based off of Kava bouncing back right now. This is trying to make a move back there towards 40. Is Kava going to go lower or higher here? I'll tell you one thing. I have no idea, but I'll keep an eye on it. All right, SDA mentioned in the chat, Sun Suncar Technology Group's auto parts name. Take a look at the daily chart on this. Doesn't look too bad. Pulled back there. Started to come back here. My only problem with SDA is I don't have enough history to go off of, right? Don't have enough price discovery. Could this one go higher? Hell yeah. When you don't have price discovery, you don't know where there's resistance. You don't know where there's support. Let's find out, right? All right, we'll see what else are being mentioned in the chat there. It's about, what, 351 here in a little bit. We'll start wrapping up, team. Smash the like out there if you guys are having a good time. All right, let me keep going here. I got to take a look at what else is being mentioned. Let me just quickly take a look there at the news, see if there's anything coming in right here towards the end. I'm seeing uh, Elon Musk talk out there, OSG Square, an unusual options activity there in Square. Uh, Paramount uh, looks like uh, BET sale in doubt as Terry Perry box at the 3 billion price sources say. Mm, so it looks like uh, Para is trying to sell off uh, BET and not being able to sell it off here. Para getting hit on the downside. Will this continue to come down? WBD coming down fast. Yeah, I could see Para coming back down. I had, I had probably no business being up there and keeps coming right back down. And you can see it on the streamers. It just doesn't look that good right now. Netflix, what will happen here towards the close? Will we get a nice little lift here? It is propping. Let's see if the Qs can make that lift. We're up there to 367.60s. Definitely continuing on the upside. Definitely got out there on the SQQQs. I could see it. It got hit there. Out on the SQQQs swing. Wasn't able to get the biggest move there on the SQQQs, and that happens sometimes, team. I'll let that one go. Can't be mad about that one. CCL still hasn't stopped me out on that one. It's about one or two pennies away from there. I'm looking at Adobe to see if I just take the money and run on Adobe because this one could come spiking right back here. So that gets a little bit frustrating that I wasn't able to take the profits in Adobe. Um, could keep uh, trying to battle Adobe right back to the upside. But the upside is a quick move back through 500. So I have to keep this in mind today as this comes towards the close. 
If I don't see any type of downside action, I might just have to take the profits and run. Zscaler, the same thing I'm thinking about. That one, that one starts to climb back. Don't want to see that one back to 150. It's just been a good ride. Of course, still got my oil trades on. Exxon Mobil lower, Chevron lower. We'll see what happens to those names. They are getting a little bit of a bounce back. I'm okay with the bounce back as long as I don't see oil just ripping through the moon. Of course, 72 on WTI going to be so important to take a look at for that action. All right, let's keep going, team. How do you guys smash the like out there, guys? If you guys are having a good time, stick around. There's another show for you guys coming up next. We've got some good interviews that will be released. You don't got to go anywhere for that. Stick around right here, of course, on Benzinga. All right, let's keep going, team. Smash the like button. If you guys are having a great time out there, I'm keeping the battle on, team. Looking for some other trades to see if I can get anything here towards the close. And, of course, we'll see what happens up next. But, of course, uh, I will have Chris Ketchy try to join me here towards the close. We'll see if he's able to join me before 358. If not, I'll let you guys know about what's coming up. I thought you were on a cruise again. I was listening to Bloomberg. <laughs> I wish I was on a cruise, man. Uh, I, I'd take a cruise right now, man. I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> I'd jump right back on it. Uh, I had a good time there on my, uh, course, Royal Caribbean cruise. But these stocks have gone way too far, way too fast, man. I feel like eventually these stocks are going to turn around. They've been on a big ride up here. We'll have to find out. AAL up there to 1636. We'll look to see if finally the airlines pull back. Of course, I had love last week. I got up to 35 today. So didn't do too bad there in love. Um, but definitely maybe got out a little bit early. We'll see if these do turn around. Of course, tonight we'll get FBX to be reporting their earnings. Will they take a hit through this big uh, supporting trend line? That's something that I'm going to keep an eye out for. Of course, they do have their earnings coming in tonight. Keep an eye out on it. We'll see if they're able to hit their EPS, expected EPS of $4.89. Sales of $22.72 billion. Find out, of course, about X after the close. And if you want to take a look, Always, my man Chris Ketchy has kind of these recaps that he does on earnings. I don't know if he's doing FedEx, but he'll be on in just a second. We'll find out. Definitely, you guys can always take a look at the earnings action. Keep up with pro.benzinga.com if you guys want to get your free two-week trial and get that as soon as it hits the tape. All right, in just a second, I'm going to bring on my man Chris Ketchy. And I wanted to kind of just give you guys a little bit of some video preview about really what's coming up next, of course, guys. Of course, you guys know that we went to VCon, and VCon is, is definitely a fun place to be at. I think last year, you know, they really kind of focused more in the NFT space. This year, they focused more on business entrepreneurship and branding. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out a video that we're going to release right here at 4 p.m. in just four minutes. Don't go anywhere, team. I promise you guys will get some great brand insights on how to continue growing forward, especially if you're looking to go ahead and keep building. All right, I'm going to play a quick little uh, VCon little trailer kind of B-roll action and bring on my man Chris Ketchy to tell you guys a little bit more. What's up, brother? Thanks for having me on. I, I mean, that, that trailer's got me excited. So ready to, to have these interviews shared with the world. As you said, VCon, a fun time we had. But we also learned, you know, some of that behind the scenes stuff. And I thought it was really cool to hear, you know, especially from the Vayner team, right? Andy mm -hmm. and Avery on kind of what they're doing. How are they utilizing artificial intelligence alongside Web3 and blockchain? So I know your audience asked about... AI stocks a lot. And I think, you know, the interesting parallels there of AI in the world of blockchain. Yeah. And definitely one of the things that I always look at is also trying to understand how all these technologies are coming together, right? Because the truth is, is that I, I don't think that there's going to be, 
you know, kind of cryptocurrency, NFTs, blockchain, AI. I think all these things are going to be kind of in one realm, right? What are we seeing? We're really seeing an advancement in technology that we're really getting to that next level. So it's really fun to kind of catch from these guys what they think the focus is going towards, especially like someone like Avery, right? Why do I like Avery so much, president of Vayner3? is because she really has the insights into the brands, the biggest brands in the world that work with these companies, right? There's a reason why. They want to be ahead of the game, not behind the ball. So learn a little bit more about this, guys. Take a, take a look at to what she's talking about, what brands are really focusing on, because that's really going to be the next step and the next thing that you're being marketed to. And if we're being marketed to, there has to be some investment value there, right? All right, Chris, it's going to be three fifty nine. I'm going to let you get out of here and go check it out yourself, my friend. Thank you for getting out there to VCon and doing some of these interviews. Always looking forward to getting more from you, Chris. And of course, if you guys aren't following Chris Ketchy already, what are you waiting for? Our best journalist, at least in my eyes, I'll definitely say it. My man, Chris Ketchy, give him a follow on Twitter. He always puts up some great tweets. We'll see you like always, Chris. Take care, my friend. Thank you, brother. Hope everyone enjoys. See ya. All right. We'll see you there, guys. We're going to start that up right now. I will take a look right back into the market. What are we doing here, team? Looks like we're climbing back the wall of worry. We'll find out what happens after the bell. Come check out, of course, that premiere starting up right now. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 